Hi students, Biology 2, DSB 102 online course, uh, getting closer and closer to the end. This is our 23rd and last lecture in this class, in this semester. Uh, it is from the series called Ecology and uh, in this lecture, we will talk about biodiversity and particularly on about the human impact of on biodiversity. How do we change uh, ecology? Uh, so first of all, what, what, what is biodiversity? D defined as the number and variety of organisms found within a specified geographic region. I'm giving you a reference to the site where this is discussed in great detail. Uh, I advise you to go over it. Uh, there's a lot in the site, and I will not put everything, of course, on the quiz or exam, but uh, just for your better orientation in ecology and in the questions of biodiversity, I advise you to uh, go over it. Uh, one uh, kind of uh, caution, biodiversity is not the same as uh, the uh, density of uh, plant and animal population in a certain area. Because you know, if you take a square uh, mile of uh, prairies where uh, only grass grows, <laughs> And the density is huge, but the biodiversity is, well, not that big. There's, it still exists, but it's not as large as it is in, the, in some other areas because, again, it's the number and variety of organisms found within a specific, specified geographic region. Uh, it varies greatly from region to region. Uh, in this map, you see there are some... Uh, uh, additional notes on, on this uh, uh, paragraph on, on the variability of diversity from uh, region to region. Uh, biodiversity is greatest in the tropics, right? So it's, it's not as big in the areas with the temperature or climatic extremes. Biodiversity is not uh, huge in polar areas, and bi biodiversity is not all that big in the areas close to the equator, where uh, the temperature is uh, very high and uh, the uh, you know, humidity is very high. Uh, especially, uh, the biodiversity, of course, is very limited in large desert areas. Um, <coughs> uh, uh, it's the southern hemisphere has a bigger biodiversity than the northern uh, uh, hemisphere. The reasons for that uh, are probably complex. I'm not an ecologist. I cannot go over them. But if you are interested, please, you're welcome to do some research and find out. Maybe there are some, I'm sure there are some hypotheses of uh, trying to explain why uh, uh, the southern hemisphere is so richer in biodiversity. 70% uh, of the world's species is found in just 12 countries. Australia, Brazil, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, and Indo uh, uh, India, Indonesia, Madagascar, Mexico, Mexico, Peru and Democratic Republic of Congo. The 12 countries have about 70% of all, uh, ex uh, of all uh, known species. Uh, that's, uh, it, it tells you something. But you know, biodiversity is, again, it, it's, uh, uh, it's a complex thing. Why is that? Uh, just these 12 countries harbor so such a great uh, v variety of, of species. Uh, 
uh, definitely some climatic factors and uh, uh, probably also uh, peculiar geography and uh, uh, maybe lack of some human activities that uh, uh, hurt biodiversity. And uh, the last point that we want to make in this slide, severely, biodiversity is severely impacted by humans. Uh, just one uh, figure to give you an idea that uh, our human activities increase the rate of species extinction some, somewhere between 1,000 uh, 1, and 10,000 times compared to what it would be if we did not do anything, if humans... Uh, either did not exist or uh, existed as primitive you know, tribes of hunters and gatherers. Uh, but it's, that, that is based on some pretty solid studies. And, and uh, there is, a, I don't have it on the slides, but I saw a chart somewhere where uh, the uh, number of species per say, square mile or, or Hundred something like hundreds, maybe hundreds square miles, is plotted against simply the growth of human population over time, and uh, there is a direct correlation between extinction of species and growth of human populations. And interestingly, it becomes exponential, becomes very steep after 1950. So when uh, it, it, there was like the second industrial revolution and uh, uh, the automobile industry made a huge leap. Uh, people started to you know, own cars, families began to own cars and uh, freeways were built in the United States and in other countries and pollution, air pollution of course increased many, many times over. So we, in short, we do harm to biodiversity. Let's move further. So uh, the, this slide shows you some species that are extinct, so they don't exist right now. And uh, they are, um, it's like not that they were here on this planet millions of years ago. No, they were here uh, decades ago. For example, passenger pigeons, uh, it, populations of passenger pigeons were uh, described uh, and, and studied very actively in the 1930s, 1940s. Now they don't exist. Uh, or the, the dodo bird, it, it's, uh, it's a, it was a, a native of Australia, it doesn't exist anymore. Tasmanian wolf does not exist anymore. Uh, mammal bird does not exist anymore. Oh, and here, th this is the slide that I mentioned. I, I was wrong. It, 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 I do have it in my uh, lecture. So, see, it plots the... Uh, uh, extinction of species and uh, the uh, number of uh, humans living on Earth uh, versus time. And you see that between uh, uh, 1800 and uh, 1950, uh, the growth of, of human populations was not very steep uh, statistical uh, you know, biometrical data showed that it did grow but sort of incrementally a little bit at a time and so so did the extinction of species but beginning from 1950 you see there's exponential growth of humans and the exponential growth of uh, uh, extinct species so uh, as we, as humans, expanded, uh, biodiversity shrank. And so, uh, obviously, we are not uh, doing something right. We are uh, parasites who uh, do a lot of harm to uh, our environment, 
environment, biodiversity in our environment. Uh, some uh, particular uh, disturbances caused by humans, which definitely decrease biodiversity. Deforestation, uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, you see deforestation yourself when you drive uh, in, uh, in, the, in the heartland of our state. Uh, there are areas that are totally uh, deprived of forests. Forests, you see some remnants, you see like, uh, you know, uh, stumps, but not much else. And you see all these logging trucks on highways all the time. We we curse them. They uh, every now and then they kill people, uh, and that just gives you an idea that biodiversity, that that, that deforestation is uh, proceeding, proceeding at high speed. And you see that on this slide in the uh, lower left corner. Uh, I think it was made, looks like it was made in, in Australia, and this is a, a koala bear cub who is uh, just sitting very lonely with this sad expression on his, its face. It needs forests, and animals need forests, and when, when forests are gone, they, they don't feel good, and their numbers decrease, and so the uh, species become uh, non-existent in this particular area, and uh, in extreme cases, uh, they, be they become extinct. Uh, the uh, right, uh, lower right corner shows you deforestation over the years, and you compare uh, the first uh, moment uh, when it was studied, it was 1985, Right and uh, all, all in glo on the global scale, about 20, what, 26 percent of all forests were uh, gone. Uh, so the 20, there's 26 percent deforestation. Now 2020, this is uh, projected two years from now, what 67 percent of world's forests are gone. It's, it's very bad. It's something that has to be stopped, contained, or at least slowed down. Uh, of course, wood is used you know, in, in industry, in, in uh, uh, the building of houses, in the uh, making of furniture, in, in the making of paper, cellulose is the material that uh, is uh, the uh, something that is used to make paper. Paper is basically processed cellulose. Cellulose is part of the timber. Um, so gazillions of acres of forests are cut down uh, in order that we can write uh, whatever, you know, some silly memos or, or uh, whatever. And so uh, think about that. Think about not using so much paper. And we uh, faculty in, at Mississippi University for Women and elsewhere, we are encouraged strongly to use uh, uh, electronic communication with you rather than uh, type our lecture notes or review questions on paper and then make uh, hundreds, over hundreds of copies and distribute that among students who sometimes lose it or trash it or don't, aren't that interested. So uh, let us uh, make this pact <laughs> together, you and me and other faculties, faculty and staff, uh, use electronic communication as, as much as possible. Do not use excessive amounts of paper. Uh, uh, oops, I... 
dynamics. Second cause of, uh, or second kind of disturbance is, oh, pollution. Uh, I, I skipped over the slide and uh, there is, on, in my, on my screen there is only forward uh, arrow, no backward arrow. So I'll just say it in words and you guys can see it in your computer. Uh, the uh, uh, pollution, uh, pollution of uh, soil, wa water, air uh, is huge again. It's it's out of uh, out of uh, out of uh, control. Uh, there are some I, I missed the slide. There are some pretty disturbing pictures about children swimming in in trash, etc. Uh, one thing that I uh, want to stress on when we talk about pollution, uh, there there are there is trash that is biodegradable, right? For example, pieces of wood, uh, shred paper. It, it's biodegradable. If it if it is in the soil, it will not be there in say five years or ten years. It will it will be degraded by microorganisms. It will be turned into something edible for them. But there are there are things that we uh, often throw away, uh, put in uh, in trash, and uh, they are not biodegradable. Many kinds of plastic, uh, polystyrene, is absolutely not biodegradable. There are no bacteria, no fungi, no no, no my other microorganisms that could uh, digest uh, polystyrene. Uh, and uh, it's terrible. You know, laboratories, scientific laboratories, especially in natural sciences, in chemistry, in physics, in biology, we use so much polystyrene. It's, it's amazing. So again, we have to be careful about it and, uh, well, uh, be careful disposing of it, uh, uh, talk about, or learn about ways to uh, trash it separately so that it is not contaminating, polluting the, uh, especially water. You know, we, uh, oceans harbor megatons of plastic that humans throw away, and uh, uh, especially when plastic is thrown into rivers, which then flow into the sea, and this plastic floats in the ocean and kills uh, millions of fishes and sea mammals, dolphins, whatever. Uh, so be careful about plastic. Uh, don't overuse it. Uh, if uh, they pay in stores, they offer you plastic or paper. Uh, choose paper. It's uh, better for the environment. It's, it's, it is biodegradable, and unlike plastic. Uh, th third uh, disturbance here on the slide, overhunting and overfishing. Uh, people uh, hunt, uh, have, have, people have been hunting for food for millenniums, right? So it's, it's kind of deep-seated uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, spending time and uh, there is the, this hunting uh, euphoria uh, people get excited when they chase and hunt and hunt down some animal etc but uh, in uh, reasonable proportions there is nothing wrong with it but it um, the, the trouble is that uh, it goes out of control again out of proportion this left slide shows you it's a pretty disturbing, it's a disgusting picture, but uh, it, it, you know, it's something that will sink in your memory. You will you're not easily forget it. You see thousands of dead sharks, right? And uh, why were they killed? Because people like their fins and the meat that is just around the fin. It's um, it maybe uh, I don't know. It's an ounce of meat, 
uh, and these the sharks are killed just for this fin and the meat around it and also uh, people make things, make uh, some utensils from the uh, cartilage of the fin, whatever. But just, just to think about it, to kill this huge animal just for its fin, right? Isn't it? Isn't there something wrong with it? One can say, well, sharks. Who cares about sharks? They're dangerous. They kill kill people. Well, you know. Uh, uh, Mosquitoes that carry malaria, plasm, uh, plasmodium malaria, kill uh, thousands of times more people per year than, than sharks do. And uh, actually hippos kill more people per year than sharks. Sharks do not attack people very often. Sharks sometimes do attack when people uh, interfere with their breeding and caring for the young but uh, other than that you know people are definitely not their food uh, they eat fish they don't eat us they can attack a person just to uh, ward off ward that person off their territory where they breed uh, so it, it, those it, it's it, that cannot excuse this colossal killing of, of sharks uh, just just for their fins and uh, on the right you see the dead lion uh, lions are not exactly ex uh, endangered species but their numbers are shrinking by year by year and to very large extent because of poachers uh, people who hunt illegally or people who even people who hunt legally get licenses, you know, pay money for uh, participating in safaris, etc. They kill lions, and lions do not. The population of lions is not that easily restored. You know, they. Uh, if you look at statistics, lions are decreasing, and one day they will probably make endangered species and uh, uh, maybe one day uh, hopefully not but it can be that one day lions will become extinct uh, by the way I, I read one interesting uh, story about uh, how uh, uh, the uh, researchers compared uh, how many times uh, per year or per lifetime do people see lions and where do they see lions and it turned out that children in Dakar it's the uh, capital of Senegal an African country uh, do not see lions more often than uh, children in Stockholm Sweden where lions definitely do not roam the streets <laughs> uh, both uh, groups of children saw lions exclusively in the zoo or in the circus never in the in the wild and of course if you if you compare rural populations somewhere in the savannah then that's a different story but still you know it's it nowadays lions are rare uh in, back in uh like several centuries bc uh, lions roamed in Europe, you know, the, 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 one of the uh, mighty deeds of uh, Heracles, the Greek semi-god hero, was that he uh, uh, fought a lion uh, of Nemea, uh, famous creature, famous animal that uh, terrorized the, the, uh, the area around it. So in Greece had lions, Turkey had lions, uh, um, country, other countries in Asia had lions, and now, of course not. Uh, lions can be found only in uh, sub-Saharan Africa in the savanna area. So over overhunting and overfishing is terrible. And uh, by the way, you know one colorful example of overhunting, uh, buffaloes. Uh, there were 
millions over millions of buffaloes in the prairies, uh, but they were almost driven to extinction. Thank God people figured out that it's not the way to treat them, and now they live in uh, ref in uh, wildlife refuges, but, but still they are, uh, they, they are rare. Um, now, global climate change, something that is right now, it's very politicized. It's, uh, th there's a lot of controversy ar around it. Uh, there are claims that it's all hoax, that uh, like global warming do not, does, not, does not exist, does not occur. Uh, but uh, there are some pretty strong uh, indications in favor of the notion that global warming does exist, does proceed. Uh, the temperature of the oceans was measured pretty accurately over the last 40, 45 years with big precision. And it has been shown, it's, it's not uh, something made up, it, it has been shown by, has been shown by many, many, many different laboratories, stations uh, in all, all over the globe that uh, on average the temperature of oceans within the last uh, 40 years approximately uh, rose by uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius. It's uh, over 2 degrees Fahrenheit. It, you know, it, it can seem like, well, what's the big deal? Two degrees Fahrenheit plus minus, who cares? But it's what is amazing is that it is statistically significant. It is, uh, there is very little variation from, from measuring to measuring. Everyone really came to the consensus that this rise does occur. Uh, not that big uh, right now, but still, you know, it's average. So it, in some areas, it's bigger than that. And uh, especially in polar areas where the animal life is very adapted to f freezing cold water, uh, there are some losses already. You know, the population of polar bears is... Uh, is shrinking. Uh, maybe the seals, uh, sea lions are almost extinct. There is less and less of them. Uh, and there are other evidence, lines of evidence that the climate, the climate change proceeds. Glaciers shrink. Uh, the uh, sea ice, uh, like total uh, area of the, the sea covered with ice is shrinking. Also, it's, it's accurate measurements done in many different laboratories, many different weather stations, etc. It is, it's, it's a scientific fact. It's not something that people just uh, made up to fit some political agenda. Uh, I give you a link to a uh, very detailed description of climate change and the evidence uh, of particularly global warming. Uh, please read it. You, you, will, you will get a lot of information from, from this site, which I cannot really give you in, in re these lectures. It's some, somewhat maybe beyond this course, but it's a, it's a very interesting and useful reading. Uh, how do human activities uh, contribute into uh, the uh, uh, climate change? Uh, in the left slide, you see uh, global uh, temperature, it says anomal, an, uh, anomaly. Uh, so it's the, like deviation from the... Uh, uh, 
from the uh, measure from average uh, uh, number of degrees uh, uh, that was uh, recorded in say in, the, in this slide in the 1900 the year 1900 and you see the temperature goes up steadily it, it's it's some kind of uh, average temperature in this in the in the uh, sea in the oceans and on the surface of the earth and it it grew substantially from uh, from zero to point six, so that it's a significant growth of, of temperature. And the red line, the red the red curve, uh, gives you an idea about the uh, increase in the carbon dioxide concentration. Carbon dioxide concentration in the air is to a very large extent due to human activities. Of course, uh, some of it is just animals and humans breathing oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, etc. Uh, definitely, but, but then uh, see again, in the beginning from the 1950 uh, approximately, see between 40 and 60, how did this red curve change? It became exponential. It jumped up, right? So uh, that's because of, again, because of extensive use of fossil fluid, flu uh, fossil fuels, uh, oil, gas, gasoline, uh, kerosene, uh, aviation, and air, the aircraft. They have used uh, not as much right now, but in the 1960s, 70s, kerosene was like the like number one ingredient in the uh, jet fuel. Um, so all that in substantially increases the uh, uh, carbon dioxide emissions and grow. It impacts the growth of carbon dioxide in the air. Uh, then another thing, methane. Methane, uh, why I, um, I chose this slide and put it on, on, your, uh, on your lecture, because methane is a, uh, a, uh, a Green, greenhouse, oh, sorry, the word slipped out of my head. Uh, the greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide is a, a greenhouse a gas, which means that it, uh, when its concentration in the air rises, then the temperature rises and the humidity rises. And it's, that's the phenomenon of a greenhouse where plants produce a lot of, uh, or they, they actually, Sorry, they, they consume a lot of carbon dioxide. So uh, the uh, temperature and humidity must be maintained artificially. But it, overall, on our Earth, uh, as we, we saw from these slides, the temperature is going up and the humidity is going up. So there is definitely some greenhouse effect, and it is attributed to greenhouse gases. So, but the recent studies showed that methane is a, probably the number one greenhouse gas. It's more powerful than carbon dioxide. And uh, methane, uh, to a very little extent, it is the product of uh, life. It, it, some uh, bacteria produce methane. Other bacteria, by the way, feed on methane. Uh, but with humans, human activities lead to a very steep increase in methane concentration. Again, you see in the, uh, the, the graph shows you that all the way until the year 2000, uh, the concentration of methane in the atmosphere did not change. It was almost the same. But then in the 2000s, it's jumped steeply up. 
uh, and it says here methane is released by coal mining, landfills, uh, by agriculture, particularly through the digestive process of beef and milk cows. Uh, herds of cattle grown for uh, milk and especially for meat here in the United States, here in our state of Mississippi, they are colossal contributors into this greenhouse effect, global warming, global climate change. Uh, personally, I love cows. I think they are the maybe the most pleasant, most amicable creatures in the world. They, they are so uh, nice. Their eyes are always kind, etc. But, but, but we are overgrowing them. We are raising a lot more cattle than we should uh, raise. We eat a lot more meat than, than we should eat. It's just this human irresponsibility. Uh, I, again, read somewhere that uh, all the way up to maybe 1960s, uh, the, it, was a, it was considered a, uh, you know, good manners to put a portion of meat on a plate uh, which could be covered by a deck of cards. That was it. Uh, and no one questioned that that's the right <laughs> portion, the right size. <laughs> and this, that could be actually a delightful steak or tasty hamburger or whatever under the deck of cards. Now, oh, people sometimes say, if I pay money in the restaurant, I want big you know, big steak for my money, big portion of meat for my money. Uh, order <laughs> this big portion of meat in the restaurant, and once the waiter puts it on your table, cut it in half or cut it in three parts, eat one and save and the other one or the other two <laughs> parts for for the future, eat it tomorrow or day after, or freeze it, etc. Don't uh, overeat meat. It's uh, first of all, it's unhealthy, and second of all, it encourages this uh, raising of huge numbers of cattle and uh, producing this methane by cattle, and it's contributing into the. Uh, global climate change. Okay, guys, that's that's probably it. Uh, so this is the end of this cycle, ecology, and it's the last lecture in our uh, course. Uh, there will be a short quiz on ecology. I saw first quizzes on evolution. I will look uh, later today and uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow, I will grade all your quizzes about the quiz on ecology. You noticed that I skipped a lot of material from your textbook. It doesn't matter that I forbid you to read it. It would be a good thing for you to read the entire, uh, uh, the whole material on ecology in your textbook, but I will not give you any questions on quizzes or, uh, and exam. Uh, but what I do want you to know from these lectures on ecology, please understand what are communities, what are ecosystems, what are biomes, what is biosphere. Uh, know uh, the main interactions between species, uh, amensalism, commensalism, uh, mutualism, parasitism, pred predation, uh, these, these be, and be able to give examples, give examples, not just learn the terms, but uh, give examples from life. You need to uh, know maybe two, three examples of commensalism, mutualism, pre predation, parasitism. Uh, then uh, do have an idea about the 
impact of humans on biodiversity, uh, especially two things here. First of all, uh, be familiar with uh, kinds of uh, human activities that lead to decrease in biodiversity and have an idea how to behave to sort of mitigate, to, to lessen the effect of our activities on, uh, on, on, on uh, biodiversity. Uh, know about uh, simple rules of uh, you know, uh, disposal of trash, recycling of, of trash. Uh, uh, be able to uh, argue with someone uh, who uh, does not you know, does not believe you. Con be able to convince a person that overhunting and overfishing is is bad. Uh, and know about the greenhouse effect. Know about the effects of carbon dioxide. Know about the effects of methane on on this. Okay, uh, I so. Uh, uh, ask me questions, write me messages to my email address or on Canvas, doesn't matter, I'll, I'll see them on Canvas or in my email box. They come to my email box anyway. Uh, and uh, just good luck to you again. Please do study, do read, do listen, uh, look at these slides. And if you don't like to listen to my voice, then just uh, turn the uh, sound off. If you think that I'm too long and too boring, <laughs> just skip uh, my contribution to these lectures and just go over slides and whatever works for you guys. Okay, well, best wishes to you and uh, I'll, I, I hope I'll see you maybe someday in real life. If not, then just best of luck to you and everything. Bye-bye. I'm sorry, I interrupted the previous lecture without going over the last two series of slides which show you endangered species. And I, I really want you to uh, know, uh, be able to name and describe briefly uh, a few of these uh, endangered species. And, and endangered species means that it's a species that is still not extinct, but under great danger uh, of extinction. And uh, these uh, species will be extinct if we don't do anything about, uh, about that. If we do not stop uh, overhunting, overfishing, polluting the areas, etc. Uh, humanities, they are, um, uh, if you look at if you Google manatees, you'll see that uh, they kind of they became endangered species. Then they exclude they were excluded from the list of the endangered species. They then they were again included into this list. But uh, so this, so they are kind of endangered. Uh, the thing is that they are not very common, and so the humans do not come in contact with them. But uh, when uh, people uh, do something in the area where manatees live, you see manatees, they are sea mammals, they are big, they are not, they're kind of clumsy, and uh, they are very sensitive to things like pollution, especially when uh, there is plastic dumped into their uh, area of habitation. They die massively. Uh, red koala, uh, common uh, black black and white koala bear is not yet considered endangered, but red koala is. Um, uh, then uh, sea turtles, many, not one, but several species of sea turtles are uh, endangered, and some are, red, are on the merge of extinction. Again, they are very sensitive to uh, pollution, particularly to plastic. They, they aren't very fast. They aren't very, uh, you know, uh, they may be kind of clumsy and they 
they do they die in large numbers when the area is polluted plus uh, people hunt them and old sometimes over hunt them uh, hip hippopotamus or hippo also endangered species uh, it's a dangerous species for us hippos are uh, very aggressive they especially female hippos when, when they have their young they will not tolerate uh, anyone uh, on, on their territory they will uh, kill you know they will, sometimes they kill even tigers <laughs> uh, then uh, they, they certainly kill a lot of people a lot more people are killed by hippos than by sharks uh, but uh, they are endangered species. They should be. Uh, they should be uh, uh, ta taken care of. Bald eagle, you know, it's uh, the national uh, uh, bird of the United States of America. We are proud of having uh, this creature on our uh, emblems, but but it is endangered uh, again uh, it's a combination of factors it's uh, a noise pollution uh, uh, eagles generally and bald eagles in particular they are sensitive to noise they don't they like to live where it's quiet and so uh, they, they cannot sur simply survive in areas where factories are built or trains are going and so they become extinct in those areas and generally they are endangered and this last slide okay, here, shows you some endangered species in our state sandhill crane uh, silvery minnow a small fish but it's so beautiful and it's uh, it's based all, almost almost driven to extinction by overfishing mostly uh, then you know there is a a, a habit of uh, uh, catching fish using fish nets and if there are some uh, small fishes that somehow uh, do not escape the net uh sailors uh, fishermen sometimes just dump them on the uh on the deck or on the shore and don't don't return them to water and uh, they die and so the silver minnow is a, the populations shrank a lot uh green water snake uh by the way it's not poisonous uh it's pretty harm harmless but it is almost extinct Mississippi black bear, uh, together with its brother Louisiana black bear, endangered, and ring sawback turtle, uh, very beautiful animal, and its its beauty the beauty of its uh, shield is something that attracts hunters, uh, and also the turtle soup is considered a delicacy, etc. So it's it, it's definitely over hunted and uh, also cars kill a lot of uh, turtles daily so it, it is endangered so again uh, that's it thank you for listening and good luck to you best wishes to you and everything